That is some grim weather up there. Yeah. Uh, I know we need the rain, but uh, kind of bad timing to get some when it's so cold. Yeah, right. and, and it's not much. I mean, right. it was two-tenths of an inch of precipitation that caused all those problems yeah. last Thursday and Friday. The good news is we're not even expecting that much out of this system. In fact, when we compare the system that's coming in tonight and tomorrow morning uh, to the one last Thursday night and Friday morning, we see several significant differences. Uh, some, including the temperature, uh, being two to four degrees warmer tonight and in the morning than they were last time. That will be very significant. In addition, the chances of measurable precipitation are significantly lower than they were last Thursday night, Friday morning, and the amounts that we're expecting to fall will be less as well. So we are not anticipating nearly the impact on our communities as we saw last Friday when you know schools were closed down, businesses were closed down, multiple multi-car accidents around the area, as you uh, well know. However, because the, there is the risk that we will be just cold enough, especially on bridges and overpasses, and some precipitation will be falling late tonight and early in the morning, the National Weather Service, erring on the side of caution, I believe, has issued uh, this winter weather advisory that includes almost all of our viewing area. Western Hill Country Counties, Mason, San Saba, not included. Lampasas, Milam, not included. Uh, at worst, two-tenths of an inch of ice accumulation uh, and at best, zero uh, to a trace. There may be some areas that don't end up seeing anything out of this. Well, I want to take you first of all to our uh, storm profiler radar here, and we're showing some very patchy areas of light rain, and I think most of this is up in the clouds. This front that blow, blew in today has blown in some very dry air, as we will show you in a moment, and so this is likely a lot of this is evaporating as it hits the ground. All right, let's begin with, we're going to show you two models here. We'll begin with our uh, new high resolution model. Uh, that's seven o'clock in the morning right there. I think I'm going to back this up actually. Uh, and show you where this begins. And let me do that here. All right, there we started at 715 tonight. All right, now let's go forward in time and watch what happens. There we are at 12 o'clock midnight tonight. A little bit of precipitation developing out there in the uh, hill country. That white being actually snowflakes, okay? Then it kind of transitions to pink. Freezing rain, sleet possible mix there at 5 o'clock in the morning. Austin back down to the south and southwest. And then the southeast. And as we go forward in time, the white there, actually a little bit of snowflakes falling from the sky. And then as we go past noon and into the early afternoon, it is all over in our local area. All right, let's take you to one more uh, model. This one a little lower uh, resolution, but it's also uh, generally been a good one for us uh, over the years when it comes to winter precipitation. And it shows a little more widespread activity to the west and to the north. The beginning tonight, here's one o'clock in the morning. The blue in this case represents snow. That's up north toward Temple. But that wintry mix of possibility through the hill country, ending pretty quickly. This is three o'clock in the morning in the hill country, but then beginning in the metro area, but then it's out here quick. Within two hours, 5 a.m., we show it to the east, and then by 8 a.m., still a little lingering uh, light freezing precipitation in our southeastern counties, and then it is out of here by uh, tomorrow or Tuesday afternoon uh, by one o'clock or so. And outside right now, you can see it's overcast, but temperatures, uh, it's warm. Uh, well, relatively speaking, when you're talking about freezing precipitation, upper 30s and low 40s, obviously much colder than yesterday. This front making a significant difference. It's in the low and mid 40s right now, but this is way above the threshold we would need, even if it started raining right now, for there to be any icing problems. And off to the east also, we're in the mid 40s. Again, in the city, it's 46 degrees. Look at the low dew points, 12 degrees, 13 degrees. That means the air is real dry right now. So we're going to have to see some moistening up before we see any threat of any icing. 9 to 20 mile per hour winds. They have been gusty to up to 40 miles per hour at times today. Cedar 833 is high. Mold 1 62 is low. That's a much better cedar count than we've seen in a while, huh? All right, it's cold enough back up to the northwest that they could have problems, but the storm system that's coming at us has taken a southern route. There it is, way over the Baja, and it is going to track down south toward south Texas, and so we're one of the few spots in Texas where there's going to be a problem. Here toward Houston, yes, there will be. These will be the low temperatures in the morning, or maybe a couple degrees colder than this. It's going to have to get colder at 31 at Mabry for us to have any problems right here in Austin, but then tomorrow, our highs may not leave the 30s. So tonight, a wintry mix, some sleep possible. The chance 30, 40 percent tonight of anything measurable. Tomorrow morning down to a 20 percent chance. And then I think the clouds will actually break a little bit with a high tomorrow of only 39 degrees or so. Seven day forecast. Take a, take a look at it here. We're up to 50 on the Wednesday, 65 and 30, 77 on Friday, only in Texas. And early next week we might actually get some rain and not have to worry about any ice. We'll be right back. <laughs>